Hi everybody, this is Kwabana from OpenMV, and today I'm going to be talking about something we've been working on for a while, which is the brand new support for neural networks on OpenMV cams. So, we haven't yet quite fully documented everything, but we're putting it together. Uh, underneath the OpenMV GitHub repo, you'll now find a new ML directory. Inside of here, along with the old Har Cascade code, um, we now have C CMIS NN model and scripts support. Uh, basically, OpenMV now supports uh, the CMIS NN library, um, and you can dynamically load neural networks on your OpenMV cam and run them using CMIS NN. Um, so the, this, uh, this functionality more or less lets you take a network that's been trained on the computer using CAFE and um, convert that using quantization into an 8-bit uh, floating point um, network that can then be run in the OpenMV cam. The uh, CMIS NN library actually uses ARM DSP instructions, which allow the uh, OpenMV cam or the, uh, the STM32 uh, processor to do four instructions per clock cycle. Um, so this gives you a, quite a lot of uh, uh, zip to actually uh, run the network. Um, anyway, so you can find uh, our basic information right now about how to get started and installing CAFE and then uh, running the quantizer to uh, change the neural network into something that can be run on the OpenMV cam. Anyway, um, once you are, uh, we do have a few demos, um, CFAR and Linet um, for testing, and um, you'll be able to uh, pretty much see how we have the uh, protobuf.txt file that describes the network. And then you'll be able to use that to turn that into um, a dot .network file. Um, for example, Linet um, 6 that detects numbers is only around 104 kilobytes once you uh, push it through our network converter. Note that the OpenMV cam, at least on the H7, we support about, um, uh, we have about 256 kilobytes of heap for the upcoming model. So this means you're going to be able to run things like Linet or slightly larger neural networks on the camera. Um, for the OpenMV cam uh, uh, F7 or um, M7 that we have right now, you're going to be limited to probably using something like the CFAR 10 network or slightly smaller just because the uh, heap space on, on that machine is only um, around 128 kilobytes. Anyway, but you're going to be able to get started with your OpenMV cam M7 and in the future really do awesome things with the OpenMV cam H7. Now, all right. Um, now that we've gone over that, let's uh, actually get into some demos now. Okay, so here we've got uh, the OpenMV IDE, and we're going to be showing off uh, running a uh, Linet 6 model on the OpenMV Cam H7. So first, let's uh, just run this at the maximum possible speed so you can just get an idea of what you're going to be able to do. So here's the thing running, and as you can see, we're able to actually run the neural network at um, on the order of 44 FPS. Um, as you can see right there, it's able to detect this 9 in the center of view. You can detect this uh, 8 right there, detect this 7, um, and so on and so forth. Um, so what this is doing is it's running the neural network without um, doing any multi-scale translation or anything like that. It's just providing whatever the camera sees to the neural network, and that's about all there is. However, we've wrapped the neural network support with a uh, new multi-scale detection code. And so what this is going to allow you to do is uh, rescale the network kind of dynamically um, in order to find multiple, in order to run the network on different scales in the image. So for example, I can set this uh, scale to be um, a minimum scale of about 0 0.4. And as you can see, the network is, a be is able to hit around 15 FPS detecting this number. And so we can slide it over every number here and um, it's able to find it. There's a 7, there's a 6, there's a 5. There's a zero, there's a two, there's a three, there's a four. Great. Um, and so what's awesome is that we're able to hit these kind of frame rates with the OpenMV Cam H7. On the M7, you're going to be able to do about 15 FPS, Linet 6, um, if it fits in memory. Um, otherwise, you're going to be on the OpenMV Cam H7, you're going to be able to do about 15 FPS. Um, anyway, so. What's awesome about this is uh, these are just simple toy networks to play around with, but coming in the future we're going to offer things like uh, person detection, and that's going to run 
That's going to be just about as deep as a Linet 6 model or slightly deeper, but will be run on the full image. No rescaling is necessary. And it's going to tell you with a very high confidence whether or not someone is in a room or not. And we're going to be able to hit around 40 to 50 FPS with that kind of detection model. So we're really looking forward to that for uh, commercial applications with OpenMB Cam used in presence detection kind of situations. Um, one thing to note right now is that the OpenMB Cam H7 is consuming about uh, 150 milliamp years running this demo. And um, unlike any other system, we can actually turn off the power and put the whole system down into about uh, less than one milliamp of power consumption at any time and boot it back up to uh, run the neural network whenever we feel like. All right. Now, you can also do things like running um, CIFAR 10. Um, CIFAR isn't... Uh, Actually, let me back up for just a second. So besides for being able to just search the whole center, we also have the, uh, that window detection code I mentioned before. It also will let you uh, slide the network around in the image. So for example, we can put it in this here, and it will um, find, let me just get this right. It'll find these two numbers, three and four there. And if we get it just aligned just right, it'll be able to pick both of them up at the same time. Let's see if I can do it. Anyway, um, this is just an example of uh, the network is being run about 10 times in a sliding window on the image. Um, not to say that you'd want, actually want to do this in the real application, but we offer you the ability with, uh, with a search method that more or less slides the network detection window around your field of view. Um, depending on how accurate you want it to be, you can uh, make the sliding window move very, very slightly per image. Um, this will, of course, mean it's incredibly not real time. So uh, you have to trade uh, where that network is firing basically to uh, you know how uh, uh, robust you well how um, accurate you plan to get um, anyway it's a little bit hard to get working here okay yeah anyway that's not the best to demo the um, just having it centered in the field of view is probably what you want to use anyway we can also use things like uh, we can also run the CFAR 10 network so let me just get that started so uh, CIFAR is the ability for the uh, camera to um, detect objects. So as you can see, um, this is a full color neural network. Uh, so the previous LeetNet only operates on um, uh, grayscale images. So this one actually does RGB uh, convolutions. And you can see it's able to detect things like uh, birds um, in this image. Um, it has 10 outputs, so it's going to find birds, cats, dogs, whatever. Um, what's great about this now, though, is that this network is being loaded off the SD card. Our previous demo only showed this running um, as it was baked into the firmware. Now this stuff is completely dynamically reloadable. So you can, um, what I have right now is the CIFAR 10 network is on the SD card, and it's loaded up dynamically, run. And um, after it's run on the image, it returns um, a list of objects that have uh, an index to these labels here that we then can print out. And it's detecting these things as ships. No, nope, it's a bird now. Um, one thing to keep in mind is uh, you can do two things with the neural network output. Um, notice the confidence is rather low here. Um, that doesn't, that's a slight misnomer. Uh, so just one thing to keep in mind when you're using neural networks is the confidence output is uh, dependent on what the network is um, currently, uh, on what kind of network you have. Like Linet 6, for example, gives uh, very, very high confidence outputs when it sees something in its field of view. Um, CIFAR 10, though, kind of gets you about, uh, only about 60% confidence when it sees something in its field of view. Um, you can execute the softmax function. So if you pass, uh, you know, softmax, you know, equals true to the method, this will allow you, th this will basically convert the um, outputs of the neural network into uh, a, um, an output where all the uh, activations sum to one. Um, normally, the, all the activations do not sum to one. We don't uh, we don't um, run um, the uh, we don't run the softmax uh, operate all the time. Um, anyway, you can kind of define that whenever you feel like. Uh, just a note: so CIFAR 10 can run faster. Um, you don't always have to use the most deep version of the network. You can like trade off and have a slightly less deep version. All right. So this is an example of another CIFAR 10 network, but this one is uh, slightly less deep and less accurate. Um, as you can see, though, it's still able to define the birds, if we just get it right there. Um, it's going to be, though, of course, uh, and this one runs a little bit faster, you get a few FPS bumps. Um, and if you take off the uh, multi-scale resolution code and just uh, force the resolution to only be um, one particular convolution limit, um, it's going to go way um, faster. 
as you can see right now, we're able to do about 20 FPS if um, you're not trying to convolve the image with uh, every possible scale that's present. Um, anyway, so on the OpenMB Cam H7, you're going to be able to actually run neural networks real time on the camera with low power support to be able to turn things off and on. And all the networks are reloadable off an of SD card. Better yet, if you've got your OpenMB Cam connected to something like a uh, particle I.O. board or whatnot, you can have your OpenMB Cam connected to the cloud and you can uh, update your networks uh, remotely. Anyway, thank you for watching this super long video. But I hope uh, you enjoyed this awesome new feature that we hope is going to really, really allow a lot of people to do amazing things with their OpenMV cams in the future. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.